Hey guys, Miles from Nexus Core here, coming at you at 1.37 a.m. Because your boy got to do that um, set 14, you know, uh, uh, so GB214 just came out. That's that's one that in, the set that uh, in G, it's introducing um, G's. It's the last set of G, so <laughs> what a ride, huh? I mean, man, G's almost over. Um, like, G came out when I was in 10th grade, and now it's ending in my first year of college it's wild so i know all of you were asking for that oh hold on let me just camera that a little i know all of you were asking for that shadow paladin deck profile after you saw some fights so uh i'm bringing you my gb214 uh luard um this deck's meta so that's promising no i'm joking <laughs> this is my um uh premium shadow paladin deck so let's start off with full bow uh, I hate this angle. Um, so it's just on ride draw. Uh, you run it because the deck uses soul. You want to hold the soul together. Sorry, I'm trying to fix the camera. I just want to make sure that it's like perfect or good enough as Nexus core is. Um, so in on ride draw, you run that because, um, it's like every premium deck right now. Like you just don't do foreigners because they can be retired. Um, uh, and the draw is nice, um, standard. The draw is nice, and it adds to soul. And this deck needs soul and draws. So you actually run four of the first Luard, Dragheart Luard. Um, it's Ritual 3, uh, choose two normal units from your drop zone and send them to the bottom of the deck. You can stride for free, uh, not ultimate stride though. And then on stride, counterblast one and retire one of your rear guards. Call two grade one or less cards from uh, deck to rear guard. Uh, separate rear guard, I believe, yeah. Um, pretty good. You use it because you want to get those resources out, uh, quickly. Um, you try and win with this deck by your first stride, actually. So you want to make sure, and that ha you have to get to ritual 10. So you need to get like all of your pieces out. Uh, so there you go. And then I run one Dragfall Luar just to have the back grade three to ride. Uh, it's Ritual X. You may pay Counterblast four and choose a normal unit from your drop zone, set it back to the deck to if you pay the cost, uh, if you pay that cost, you can stride or ultimate stride for free. Um, that's good. I mainly use it for that reason. Uh, so if you want to ultimate stride and you don't have the extra copy of drag heart, you can just ride this card, send the card away and then ultimate stride into it. Um, so, uh, but, uh, for every normal unit in your drop zone, sorry, for each grade one or less in your drop zone, the counterblast four is reduced by one counterblast. So if you've got four, it's free. Uh, and then when you stride, you can counterblast one, retire, oh no, call a grade one or lower card from your deck, shuffle, and if it's a ritual grade one, uh, choose one of your opponent's rear guards and retire it. So it's got a nice little control value to it, uh, but you mainly do it for the free stride and just the fact that it's another Luard heart. Um, so then we move on to grade twos. Okay, first off, I just want to say, you don't run Blaster Dark. You just, you do not need it. Um, it doesn't re revolutionize the game. It's a, a decent card. Uh, Twin Drive is cool, but what also nets you two cards without actually having to discard is Maka. Um, she's a grade two, uh, 10K. Her skill is once per turn, you can counterblast one and call a grade one or less card from your hand to the field. Um, if And then if you call something, draw a card and, the call, and this card gains 5K. So the play is that you use her and Karam and you basically get a free draw and a 26k column. Um, she can be used on Vanguard and Rearguard. So, <sighs> what's the reason for using Buster Dark? <laughs> you just, the, the retire doesn't matter. Uh, then I run three uh, Drag Wizard Naush. Um, so Naush is a Ritual 3 GB1 card. It's a uh, on call. Check the top five cards of your deck, call one grade one or less card from among them, and then shuffle. Um, at the end of the turn, uh, you put that unit on the bottom of your deck. Um, and then if you called a unit by this card skill, uh, with the ritual ability, this card gains 2k. Then if it's a grade one, it gains 3k. So basically, if it's a grade one ritual, this card gains 5k. Um, great card for getting your resources out. Uh, and for that deck thinning, you know, you use it like turn one when you stride and you just get out more resources you want to dig uh and i think three is fine when i was running it at four i saw it too many times and i was like i don't i don't want to run three i don't want to run four um then i run three dagda an another one that i was running at four earlier and saw it too frequently um uh again like 
you go for first stride, you go for first stride win. So I just didn't feel the need to run four after I kind of blew my load in that one turn. I shouldn't say that after I did everything I could in my, you know, first stride, uh, I had no reason to like go back into deck. My deck was empty of grade ones because it digs that much. Um, but what it does is GB1 Ritual 5, when it attacks, you counter one and choose one of your grade one or less rear guards and retire it. I might have misplayed it. I didn't know I had to retire grade one or less. Fuck. I should read my cards. Um, so you pay that cost uh, when it attacks a Vanguard. Um, if you have a Luard Vanguard, you can pay the cost. So you will. Um, basically, so search your deck for up to two grade one cards. They cannot be grade one or less. And you call them to separate regards. So it allows for multi-attacking. And with the new G, uh, uh, G unit Morfessa, the first Morfessa you actually run in the deck. Um, but you actually don't run it in the deck. Uh, yeah, G zone. Um, then it allows for another big beefy attack. It's basically what you did with Dragfall Luard, but or Dragheart Luard, but like I guess better because there's a crit on it. Then I run one slap tail. Um that's another reason I took out a Naush uh or a Dagda. I wanted to fit in the one. Uh, it's ritual three when your other grade one unit is placed on rearguard. If you have a Luard Vanguard, no, if you sorry, if you have a Vanguard with the ritual ability, uh, that placed unit and this unit gain 3k. So that's cool. Uh, you do a lot of calling and calling over. So um, you can stack it. But uh, it's also in deck and drop zone, it counts as a grade one. Or it loses a grade, becoming a grade one. Uh, as long as you have a grade f- a Vanguard, yeah, grade four Vanguard, Lu- uh, Luard Vanguard. So um, I run this because with Dagda, I was getting to a point where I was only seeing the like 5k... Um, grade ones or no grade ones at all and i was like if i had a slap tail i could call it out and hit for more and if you run one and you ride it you can soul blast it out and shuffle it back in with luard uh so like one is fine people are sleeping on the fact that this deck recycles shit uh so then on to grade ones i run three nemin uh i don't need four again slap tail uh, so I was playing it and I was like, you know what? I don't need four. I keep seeing it too frequently. I don't like it's a 5k. If it's your first turn ride and it's your attack, you're probably not going to hit. Um, so it's, uh, on rear guard act, you rest it and basically search your deck for a 5k card. It cannot be less. It has to be 5k power. Um, and then call it to an open rear guard and shuffle your deck. The ability of this card can only be used. The ability <laughs> This, how does it how is it worded this ability may only be used by a card with the same name once a turn so basically once you use it on any nemin you cannot use it again for the turn another reason not to run for um so what you can do is you can call out another nemin and it's called out a stand so that's cool or you can call out one of your two sword breakers blackwing sword breaker um her skill is on call from hand or from deck uh, as long as it's just placed, counterblast one and draw a card. And if this unit is was placed from the hand, she gains 5k. So, um, nice little first turn. Uh, like, if you, you know, not if you ride it, you can call it, get that. Not, not first turn, sorry, like second turn or whatever. Yeah, it would have to be second turn. You can call it, gain the 5k, and then, uh, you can use it as a 10k beater. Uh, and if it dies, that's just fuel for ritual. You don't want to run anymore, though. That gets a little too clunky. And then you run for Charon. This card's actually good in this deck. Um, when placed by the ability of a card, so whether that be from hand or deck or drop zone, which isn't a thing, uh, you can soul blast one, counter charge one, and this unit gains 3k. So that's neat. Um, if you call it with Charon, then Charon is basically a free draw. I mean, Maka, if you use it, if so like turn two, when you ride Maka, you can use Maka skill, call Charon. That's a free draw right there. And then a 26k column. Um, and then I also have Cursed Eye Raven, so you can call it from deck, and there is, uh, Luard skill as well. So you basically would call it for free if it's for Luard, and that's how you get your soul out, too. Uh, then I run one Flomnock, or Flomnotch, whatever her name is, Drag Wizard Flomnock. Uh, so this is the same reason I run it, uh, I run Slaptail. Um, it's a grade, it's a card that you can superior call the Dagda skill that can hit for more than, like, 20 22 or so um because you know you call out slap tail that's already 24 so you can hit force numbers if you call this out and you're at ritual five uh, if you have a grade four vanguard or uh, luard um then this unit gains 7k and resist i like the resist although i don't think that's a big deal um but the 7k is nice it becomes 14 so that becomes 29 which is actually 
you know, bigger than slap tail. So like call that into a column and that's 14, what, 23, 38, big force number. Uh, and then it's other skill is if it's in the hand, you can discard it and rest another rear guard with ritual and draw. So like, that's okay. Then I run one abyssal owl. I just added this in because I was playing a lot the past couple days and I realized something um, other than Charon, this deck doesn't really counter charge enough. Like you need to bank on on superior calling Charon, whether again, whether that be from hand or deck, but regardless, you can if it's in your hand, you can only superior call it using um uh Maka, which costs a counter blast. And if it's in your deck, you either need to like luck sack into it with abyss uh with um a what is it called? Sorry, cursed eye raven, or you have to superior call it with Dagda which is a counter blast. So if you have this card already on deck and you go into Murfessa, which retires your rear guards or anything that retires your rear guard, you can counter charge. Its skill is, um, uh, well, first off, when it's placed on rear guard, check from hand, you check the top seven cards for a Luard, add it down. If you add one, discard cards in your hand, equaling a total of grade three. So it's already nice for fueling ritual, but then it's other skills, ritual three, when it's retired from rear guard for the effect or cost of your card with Luard in its card name, soul charge one. And uh spoiler alert, the main card that retires is going to be named Luard. Um, it also makes Luard stride skill free. So like, yeah, uh, just a one. You don't need that many definitely don't need it again you can dig so much in this deck it's okay then i also run one day lid it's a ritual one on when it's placed from deck uh if you have a soul blast one if you have a vanguard or the ritual ability you draw um so it's a nice you know first stride plus uh it gets your soul out for ritual you know pretty good then i run one light element honolly this is a cray elemental that's actually useful um all of your rear guard, all rear guards cannot attack the vanguard. Okay, basically it's like a, anyone's rear guard can't attack the vanguard unless it's the for the fifth battle or more, unless you pay one counter blast. So it's nice to um, stop multi attacking decks like Nova's. Um, this deck, no, this deck doesn't matter actually. Uh, Golds just a, like Excel decks mainly. Um, so that's cool. Uh, it actually saved my ass in a game earlier today against Gold Paladin. So yeah, fun card, but on call, you have to choose a face-up card from your damage and turn it face down. So like, that's not that fun. But um, again, this deck can counter charge enough, especially now that Abyssal Owl is in the deck, that uh, you can renew that pretty quickly. Also, if you call it when you have no counter blast, you can't uh flip anything down so like it's just a free call um this deck's funny because it still runs uh you know grade one pgs <laughs> so it loses to each um this is ezra's i'm pretty sure you guys know this card it's just the standard pg shit but um it's drop zone gb1 ritual three you can retire a rear guard and return another ezra's from the drop to the bottom of the deck to bounce on uh, to bounce this one back to your hand so it's a recyclable pg that adds cards back to your deck don't want to deck out that's a grade one lineup. Now for triggers, we have three Belial. This is uh, when it gets retired. If you have a Luard Vanguard draw, it's not like Abyssal Owl. Anything can retire it and you'll still get to the draw. Um, and uh, when it's in the drop zone, GB1 Ritual 3, uh, at the end of the turn, you can put it back on the bottom of your deck as long as you have a Luard Vanguard. You're also always going to have a Luard Vanguard. <laughs> Uh, and I only run three because I run three of this new one, um, Dagger of Peaceful Passing Prettyry. So this is the like new line of those um, premium triggers. Uh, they're all GB1 when your Vanguard attacks, add it to the soul, draw a card, and one of your Vanguards gets 10k until end of battle, which is neat. But because it's the new one, it actually gives 10k power and it has 15k shield. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, this deck does not have many triggers that give... 10k it's mostly 5ks uh that's why you run three of them instead of two uh then you run four of the standard heal abyss healer just because it's got the 20 shield and the 10k power don't worry you can still g guard um and four cursed eye raven its skill is act gb1 rest it put it on the top of your deck then shuffle then you check the top two cards of your deck you call any you call any of them the rest go to the bottom of your deck but you call them at rest. They have to be two open rear guards and they have to be separate. So you can't call over stuff. This card's great because it helps for deck thinning uh, because you're putting in a trigger and potentially taking out non-triggers. If you call Charon, you can proc its skill. Um, 
Another cool thing is this. At the end of the turn, the units called with this effect retire. So if you call Belial Owl and it gets retired, you actually get to draw off the Belial and then just recycle it back into deck. Uh, so that's a fun little thing. Um, and then you run two of this other... St this is an another old stand, so both of them are 5k. See, it's, it's eight cards with 5k and only seven... That's not how math works. Um... Oh my god. Oh, it's nine cards. Yeah, it's nine and seven. Uh, so GB1 Ritual 3, when it's placed from hand, uh, you it, it gets the scale where when it gets retired, you check the top two, add one card to the hand, and... Um, or sorry, you can add, you may add one card to your hand and put the rest into the drop zone. So like, add a card to hand, and then another one happens to be a grade one, you drop in a fuel for ritual. So that's the main deck. Um... Where's my, there's my G-Zone. You're going to run one Ultima, the ultimate stride. Uh, when you ultimate stride, you counter bust two. Um, and you search your deck for four cards. Shuffle. Call two of them. Um, oh, my bad. No, call two cards. Yeah, from among them. Ugh, I can't read tonight. You call two of them and put the other two on the top of your deck after you shuffle. And until end of turn, choose all of your units for trigger effects. So basically, you can stack two crits and it'll give everything... 10k and a crit so great kill card if you if you even go into it this is the card that you stride which i think is hilarious uh morfessa drag principle morfessa um so it's a regular g unit its skill is act once per turn you counter bust one and turn any g g, uh, g unit face up and retire two rear guards so again that's why i run abyssal because that makes the counter blast free uh, you draw two cards, and until end of turn, you regard trigger units in the drop zone as grade ones. So it makes going it like it makes getting ritual ten piss easy. And the reason why you want to hit rituals ten is because its second skill is ritual ten. All of your rear guards in the front row, all of your units in the front row gain fifteen k and a crit. And when your opponent would call cards from hand to guardian circle, they must call two or more at the same time. So, like, if they're just going to PG and then discard a card, they have to at least guard with one more. Um, G guarding is okay, and intercepting is okay. But if they're going to PG or guard, normal guard, they have to do it two at a time. Um, this card's great. This is, like, your main stride. This is the reason why you can kill at first stride. Um... Because you have a front row, each swinging with two crits, and immense power, and Dagda just adds a fourth attack to that. Uh, also, if you get a stand on Dagda, you can use its skill a second time. So, um, yeah. Uh, if you don't think... <laughs> when I first used this deck, I like looked at my field and I was like, I can't get to Ritual 10 right now. I'm going to go into um, Aura Geyser like I used to. And Gabe was like, bro, you can keep going. And uh, I won. <laughs> <laughs> so like if you don't think you can um try it uh i probably could have won more games in the last couple days if i had actually uh just gone hard with this card um it is a great stride and for the first time i feel like i have a reason to run more fessa um then I run two Dragabus Luard. It's basically just a weaker version of Morfessa. Its skill is act once per turn. You still bless one and flip it the same card face up. So what was it called? Persona flip. Um, call two. Oh, and choose one of your rearguards and retire it. That's right. Um, call two grade ones from your deck to rear guards and then shuffle. Um, if you called two units with the ritual ability, choose one of your opponents to retire it. So like whatever. But its other skill is GB3 Ritual X. All of your front row units gain 10k for every four grade ones in your drop zone. So like it's pretty easy to hit a lot of power, but none of them have crits on it. So like you can go into Morfessa. Um, if you want, actually, you could maybe try taking this out and running Phantom Blaster Dragon because it's the same slot number. It's two. Uh, and might have more kill potential. But um, I just like that more. I think that the pressure overall is better, and the superior calling is better for the setup. Then I run one Ogma, uh, Drag Anger Dogma, Ogma. Ooh. Uh, it's once per turn, Ritual 5, Counter Boss 1 to Soul Boss 1, and choose a face down card from your zone to turn to face up. Choose up to five grade one rear guards, retire them for each, and for each rear guard retired, uh, your opponent chooses a card from their hand and or rear guards, put it into and sends it to the drop. And if a total of three or more were put into the drop zone by both 
uh, fighters, um, you get to draw. So, like, it's nice if your opponent's at a low number of... Um, uh, a low number of like cards in their hand and don't all and also have a low number of cards in their field so you like retire that many and then they're like oh no i have to discard and they have no cards left in hand so you just kill them um and like also just because you you always go into more festa with this deck so like you can be pretty lenient with how your g zone is like the most standard thing is just getting this four more festa and the one ultima um the rest of it i wouldn't worry too much about then i run one or guys are doomed. Uh, this was so like there are going to be turns where you're probably not going to where more Fessa might not work out and you might not be totally sure. You might have to sack into them. Um, so if you don't want to take the chance, just go into or guys are doomed. Uh, it's counter blast one and flip a copy of regular or guys which you run two, which literally cannot be used because it needs to flip itself. Um, retire three rear guards and then reveal the top two cards for every grade one card revealed. Uh, retire one of your opponent's rear guards. So like nice control or whatever. And it just adds cards to hand. Uh, that's the only reason I run it. You know, it just adds a little setup. But premium's so fast that you really have to go into Morphessa and try and make it work. Then I run one of the um, Progenitor Dragon of Total Purity Agnos. This is the Progenitor Dragon. So uh, if it's face-up in your G-Zone, you can stride without paying the stride cost. Good thing you have Luar that makes it free, so you barely need to go into this card. Um, but like Orgeyser, it's a good just first-turn setup in case you need it. Uh, it's when it's placed, you counter bust one and soul bust one. Call as many cards from your hand to, uh, to all rear guards as possible and draw three cards. Um, so, like, yeah, you can just empty out, you know, a small hand and then draw three. And you're like, hey, cool resources. Um, from hand to all rear guards as possible. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then also it can't be flip face up for abilities because that would be too good so you just have to keep it face up by striding uh, but after that's free now we move on to g guardians i run one dark dragon dark veil dragon uh when you when it's placed on guardian circle you soul blast one and it gains 5k shield for every two grade ones in drop zone so odds are it's going to gain a ton of shield uh if this card doesn't work out for you try running Jolito. i think she's pretty good as well uh she's the other she's like the fighter's collection g guardian that um it got revived i think uh, it's when you guard with her, you flip another G Guardian face up, and you you move, you place two rear grade one rear guards from your field to the draw uh, to the Guardian Circle. So fuels for ritual, and if you put two there, you get to draw. So like that's cool. Um, although I like Dark Veil more, I think that it just is better for the power. Uh, two plot maker. Sorry, my phone brought up a message. Oh, it's okay. Two plot maker. Uh, ritual three. This unit gains 10k, and it's a continuous ability, so it gets over the Ichi Tom combo. This is what you're mainly going to go into, just because it's super accessible. I won one. I run one Bernac. Um, when you guard with her, reveal the top five cards of your deck, uh, and you must call every grade one from among them to the Guardian Circle. It's for ritual filtering. Uh. I would run two, but like once you've used it once, you're probably not going to want to use it again. Um, you want to keep some grade ones in your deck funnily enough because, you know, Dag does a card. Uh, so I run one Dark Element Dismal. Uh, you know, it's got resist and when it's placed on uh, Guardian Circle, you choose one of your rear guards and until end of turn, it can't be hit and cannot be chosen by the effects of your opponent's cards. Uh, the reason I run it is because there are going to be times where your opponent will want to counterblast deny, so they're just going to go for your rear guards. So if that's going to happen and you want to keep your rear guards, just like go into Dismal and protect it, you know? That way you don't need to do anything. You could run another Bronak, you could drop it for Jolito. Um, I like running the one. Yeah. Okay, so um, that is the deck. I'm just going to flex my IMR Blaster Dark that does not look good. Looks better than the... Uh, the Kara Expo exclusive. Those are disgusting, so it's not saying much. Um, okay, this is the deck. I'm glad that you guys watched it. Let me know how I did uh, or any thoughts on it. If you have recommendations, let me know in the comments below. So, uh, signing off.